Thomas, the tank engine, was a really useful engine. He was so useful that he was given his very own branch line to run on. You could almost go without me now, choked his driver with a laugh. My driver says I don't need him now, Thomas bragged to the other engines. You wouldn't dare go out without your driver, said Percy, the little green engine. I might, said Thomas. Just wait and see. It was dark the next morning when the firelighter came. He lit a fire in Thomas's firebox to start the fuel burning. Thomas woke up. Percy and the other engines were still fast asleep. Thomas suddenly remembered his boast. I'll show them, he said. My driver hasn't come yet. Here goes. He tried first one piston, then the other. They're moving, he whispered to himself. Very, very quietly, he headed for the door. Thomas thought he was being clever, but he was only moving because a careless cleaner had nothing to do with his controls. When Thomas tried to stop, he couldn't. He just kept rolling along. The buffers will stop me, Thomas said hopefully, but his wheels left the rails and crunched on the pavement. Oh no, he exclaimed, and shut his eyes. Up ahead was the station master's house. He and his family were inside, having a breakfast of ham and eggs. Crash! The house rocked. Broken glass tinkled, and falling plaster peppered the family's plates. And guess whose head was poking through the wall, looking in? The station master angrily walked out and shut off Thomas's steam. Just look at what you've done to our breakfast, scolded the station master's wife. Now we shall have to cook some more. She banged the door on her way to the kitchen. More plaster fell on Thomas. Thomas felt sad. The plaster tickled his nose. He wanted to sneeze, but he didn't dare in case the house fell on him. Nobody came for a long time. Everyone was much too busy. At last, workers propped up the house with strong poles. Then, they laid rails through the garden. Puffing hard, the twin engines Donald and Douglas managed to haul Thomas back to the yard. Thomas's smokestack was bent. Bits of fence, a bush, and a broken window frame decorated his badly twisted front. He looked quite silly. The twin engines laughed and left him. Thomas knew he hadn't behaved bad. Sir Topaman, the railway controller, came by to take a look. You are a very naughty engine, he said to Thomas. I know, sir, Thomas said. I'm sorry, sir. You must have your front mended, Sir Topaman said. Meanwhile, a diesel will do your work. A diesel? Thomas sputtered in surprise. Yes, Thomas. Diesels always stay in their sheds. Diesels never run off to breakfast in station master's houses, said Sir Topaman. A diesel came the next day to help out. At first, he didn't want to stay in the engine shed, but he soon got used to working with the other engines. Finally, Thomas came back, all mended and ready for work. He and the Diesel became good friends, and now Thomas knows not to run off without his driver. The end. <laughs>